Hey everybody, welcome back to Metalworks. Apologies for a bit of a delay in videos recently. Um, about a week ago, some stuff went down that I had to sort of sort out and uh, yeah. I have had a bit of time out here but not filming because it's just time I've been able to grab an hour here and there when I can get in here. So I'm going to show you what I've done and I'm also going to finish off the last thing I was working on that you saw me working on, which of course is the bowl. So first things first, in this time, I think you've already seen me clean these sprockets up, these are going to become clocks. I've also cleaned up um, a load of discs. Was this in the last video? I can't remember, but I've cleaned up a load of discs. So they're ready to start being made into clocks. Right, the last thing you saw me working on was this bowl. Now something that delayed me with this is I thought I had a load of these cap nuts, and I didn't. I had two. And I wanted to use them for the legs, as you can see I've mocked these up. What you haven't seen me do, uh, basically, is just cut these to length and make sure this all works together. <laughs> Dusty already. Um, and today I'm just going to basically permanently fix them on. But I have got to make one change, which is I'm not using quarter nuts on the inside, I'm using full nuts now. I considered different options for legs. As you can see here, one thing I did was I took some threaded bar, put it in a drill, and then I used an angle grinder as it was spinning to try and round this down um, smooth. And I thought, because I could watch the threads disappearing, I could get it very even. It just didn't seem to work out that way, and it ended up looking kind of weird. I mean, it looks quite cool. I think it would have been better if it was a much faster drill, but my hand drill wasn't really good enough. I mean, you can actually see, focus. You can actually see sort of, the lines running down it. This is the standard threaded rod I've used, uh, which is general steel, but as you can see it's got like a galvanization or something on it. So I've cleaned that off and now you can see it's a much better colour and it matches in better with this. So yes, so I just need to basically finish this off and then I've got tools to put together and packages and stuff and all sorts. This is, you know, things are getting interesting at the moment. But I thought I'd talk a little bit about running a little business, a small business like, you know, like the Metalworks. Because if you've been watching my channel of late, you'll know that I've been a little bit concerned about sort of, you know, cash flow and stuff and bills coming up and like, oh, what should I do about this? What should I do about that? And basically this is the one lesson you have to learn about running a small business. And um, this is something I will say, some people say, oh, you know, you've, the Metalworks have been running for six years. Yes, you're correct. But my company name, um, the business that is to do with my channel, that's been running for like six years now, maybe, maybe even seven. Um, so I'm not completely new to this whole game. But whereas in digital media, you know, you buy your cameras, you buy those bits you need, you don't really need a huge amount of money more to create content other than fuel costs and, and you know, tyres and bike repairs and all that sort of stuff. When it comes to this side of things, you keep having to buy tools um, and equipment. So I've basically invested in myself again. Uh, and this is what I'm saying about small businesses, risk. Dealing with risk. Uh, it's very weird. I get very, very panicked about things. Like, you know, like, oh, God, I haven't brought that much money in recently. I haven't done this, I haven't done that. Um, but then I realise I'm going to have to actually put my neck on the line a little bit here and get some equipment to hopefully, you know, speculate to accumulate. The tools that I've bought are basically going to allow me to continue doing what I'm doing in here, but also allow me to do something slightly faster. But it also means I can do different things. Uh, first thing I'm doing, and I guess I am gluing these on, I just want to make sure they don't come loose. Is I'm just going to glue these cap nuts onto the bottom of here because these are going to become the feet. So as is always the way, at the same time that some other you know, yearly big bills are coming around. I've had to go and spend a load more money. And I've basically, the way I've justified it in my head is I'm going to try and keep, if you watch my vlogging stuff, you know I'm considering, I was considering selling one of my bikes. I've decided I'm going to keep it. I'm going to get it insured, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to keep the thing on the road. But if this, you know, risk of spending extra money and investing more in, in this doesn't work out, it, the bike's going to have to go. Um, I'm basically using it as mental leverage, if you like you know, to keep me happy and not feel like I'm taking stupid, stupid risks. I do have people say to me, why do I talk about money and things in videos? It's basically because I'm, this is a video of my life, this is what's going on, this is my little business, and if I didn't let you know, you know, how much of a risk these things are or, or what I'm putting into this, you're not going to fully understand the story of why the passion behind it is the thing that drives it. So if you're thinking about starting a small business or something, 
my advice to you is believe in yourself. Don't make stupid decisions, but if, you, if you're doing something you like, there will be other people out there that will like it, hopefully. And you have to just sometimes just go for it and hope it works out. And that means putting money on the line, that means taking risks. But when it does start to feel like it works out at times, it's the best feeling in the world. And being able to do something that you clearly are passionate about because you're willing to make risks to do it, it's, it's enjoyable work. So it, you know, it's, it's a win-win situation if it works out. Sorry, slight camera adjustment. I've actually built a new mount um, because having tripods around me in the garage has been really, really annoying. Having you know these tripod le legs everywhere when I've already not got a lot of space to move around. I love this. It's the simplest idea I've come up with and it works fantastic. So it's just basically a piece of wood attached to the wall with some little uh, L brackets and another piece of wood that this tripod head um, pole just goes through and just sits in it. And then I've got a 3D head on it which allows me to have the uh, overhead view and then if I want to film something over there you know I can this all adjusts like so and then we can have it facing over this way or if I'm doing something somewhere else you know like it. yeah this thing super cheap because obviously you can see from the dirty wood this is made from old off cuts and it's working great and when the combination of that LED panel you saw me install before now it means it's shadowless so I don't actually get any shadow underneath this from from it it's, it's weird let me just get this done, because I've been dying to get this done for days. Uh, what other advice would I give to someone considering starting a small business? Keep on top of your accounts. Um, declare your tax, that's another thing. I, I do, I do everything above board, all legal. There's no, uh, there's no cash in hand work. That hole is just slightly too small. These are different sizes to these. No, they're the same. They're the same. Oh, it's these outer ones. Are... Anyway, I want to put this in here because it will balance better. So, drill! We've got a chamfering, deburring tool thing. Well, actually, it's a counter sinking <laughs> bit, but it works good for this. There we go. Just get rid of all the burrs. So, yeah, keep on top of your accounts. And, and the other thing is, Get used to working stupid hours. You have to put in so, so much effort to do it. I mean, if you worked out an hourly rate, you'd think you were mad. You're like, why am I doing this? Why am I just going to get a job down in Tesco's, you know? But you know why, because at the end of the day, you feel very happy with what you're doing. And in hand with that, time management is very important. Uh, just, you know, using your time wisely, you can get so much more done in a day than you'd believe. One thing for sort of some mental stability is have a very small buffer of money. You know, we're not talking thousands and thousands of pounds, but if you've got a little buffer there, you, you can feel a little bit more relaxed and say, well, I might not have sold too much at the moment, all this is taken over this week or something, but you, you can feel comfortable. You believe that later down the line you will correct things, as it were. Man, that took so much longer than I was expecting. I was trying to get it level, and then I realised that this isn't level, so I had to go and do it inside. So it's um, it's slightly off in, off in here, but it's actually right on a flat surface inside. So hopefully whoever purchases this has a surface that it'll, it'll mend to. But that is flat. So I just need to sign this. Uh, as you can see, I couldn't remove all the marks from where I'd welded it in, because I realised these are two different types of steel, and you're just never going to get that. I mean, it's smooth, but... Yeah, you just you're never gonna get rid of that. But it, I think this looks pretty cool. There's a little, uh, you know, like a hallway key thing or whatever. It's a cool little thing. This is the Dremel engraver that I use uh, to sign everything that I make. If you're not aware of this, all the clocks start with C for clock, and then it's like zero zero whatever. I think we're up to like thirty-seven or something like that at the moment. Uh, there's also D, which is display item, and this is D six because we had D one, which was a Bowl, a wooden bowl with a tornado fighter jet engine part on the top, and the other ones were tornado fighter jet blades um, on little bases that I made out of wood. So they will display one to five. Sculptures is S, uh, so that's zero zero one at the moment because I haven't made any more. Is that all that does it? Oh, and then of course then there's BFC zero zero one, which is now gone, which you've seen being made. But I have big clock ideas in the future, so there will be a BFC number two. What I sign it with is Spicy 110, the year that it's made, and then it's little serial number. So I'm just going to quickly do that. 
Yeah, this does sound interesting. Some people think that the way that I sign these, you know, it's not professional enough. But the fact is, it's I'm not a professional. I'm just someone who really enjoys making things and I sell them. So having something that's very, you know, naturalistic to me, I like doing it that way. Anyway, so this will be available on the store very soon. Um, if you wish to purchase it. Nice bolt having your hallway or something like that. I put more work in this than I was planning to, but uh, I'm going to get let it go for a little bit cheaper. In the time that I wasn't making videos, I did do a little bit of work, as I say. Um, I'd already cleaned those discs up that you'd seen. Well, I've already turned one of those into a clock. Uh, it's made for an RGV250 disc. I've actually got two of these coming up, but this one I'm doing this way round. As you can see, it's got like a dish to it. Um, oh, better zoom out. So this is basically done. I've got to give it like a... a earbud type clean, you know, really close around all the bits to make sure everything's nice and clean on it, but this is also available on the store now, uh, or I may have already sold. That's one thing I will say, a lot of people say to me, you know, oh, I looked on the store and I couldn't find the item, that means it's sold out. I put the items online as soon as they're made, that doesn't mean that they cross over at the, the video times, because videos are slightly delayed, so if you're interested in buying something, so if you are interested in buying something, you just basically have to keep an eye on the store. But follow me on one of my social medias, you know, either the Spicy One, 10, Metalworks, Facebook, or the Instagram, and you'll see, as soon as I add it to the store, it's added there. I normally share it on my other social media as well, so you can see things coming up. And things tend to sell really quickly, so that's why you'll notice if you go there, you might not find it. But you might, so go and have a look. So this has got a brushed aluminium face, the nice original blue paint. It is chipped in places, but that's the way it is, you know. It was a used disc. And as I say, it's off an RGV 250. So, new equipment. Basically, this I now own, because I've given the owner a brand new one, because I've used it more than they have, uh, and I need to use it, and they're going to be taking some of their stuff out of here soon. So, that is now mine. It's been replaced. The vice is going to be going. This isn't my vice, but I have a replacement. Um, I've just ordered some mounting plates, because I'm going to have to put some, basically, some doubler-type plates, steel plate above and below, on this top to mount that down. But... Uh, that was very cheap, that was off Amazon for like 20 quid or something, it's not huge high quality but it does the job. One thing I've been needing for a long while is a drill press because drilling the, the aluminium plates, uh, drilling holes in other things, it's just so much better to have a, a drill press. Yes this isn't great for like high high end uh, precision work but for my general uses this will do because this is cheap. Silver line, I actually think their stuff's pretty good for the money. It's not the best, uh, but it'll do the job that I need it to most cases. And if it doesn't, well, I've got a year's warranty on it. We'll see what happens. So for that reason, I've also had to get a vice for this drill press because it doesn't come with one. Some other bits that I grabbed that I needed was a hammer. This is like four pounds again, silver line. It's not finished brilliantly, but it, it's a hammer, and it's it's, it's all right. This is too too slippery. I almost feel like sanding this. Okay, so quick insert here about this hammer. It's only like four quid, so you can't expect a lot. Um, but the stickers on it were just terrible. They they would not come off, so I actually used WD-40. And ended up, in the end, as I say, I wanted to sand this, so I just sanded them off. Uh, but now I've given this a bit of a sand, you can hear it's got a much better grip to it. Uh, whereas before, it, where it was varnished, it sort of felt like it was going to fly out of your hand. You see now you really got a good a good grip. So if you buy one of these, I highly recommend sanding the handle. Obviously you've just voided your warranty, but it's a four quid hammer, so I mean, come on. What do you really expect? A hacksaw, because I didn't actually have a normal hacksaw of my own, so that's now available to me. I also picked up some uh, cheap acetone, because, you know, it's always good for taking off stickers and sticky stuff and, and um, grease and all sorts. So I've got some of that. Another thing I got was very kind of Lextech. Basically, they gave me this lot, which is obviously these are so beaten they can't sell them. They've obviously been in their uh, factory for a while, but they're new chains. So I've got options as to what I'm going to do with these. I can't quite decide yet. So these are basically rejects that are going to go in the bin, and they donated them to the Metalworks, which was very kind of them. Anyway, another thing I purchased was this, which was I don't have, I've only got one carbide tip centre punch, I don't have any drifts or anything like that. So I went onto eBay and just had a look around and found a job lot. Uh, you can get so many good tools really cheap on eBay just because people have got them and don't know what they are or, you know, I paid a tenner for this lot. This is legitimate eBay packaging. We've got the package for 
I know it might be some pie or something, but they've then taped all of these uh, drifts and punches and things in here. It was golden sponge pudding. Mmm, I'm sure it was delicious. A uh, little chisel. It's in good nick. Handy for the, uh, the beatings and stuff. Uh, this appears to be a type of scribe. Handy. Um, a centre punch. That's another one. More a pin punch, or there's all sorts of things you can use these for. It's basically good steel. There's a standard punch drift thing. Another one. Bigger one. These are all in, you know, good nick. That's not been beaten around too much. And that doesn't look like a punch, that just looks like the handle or something, but you know, it's a it's a thing you can heal. Another one. So yeah, for ten quid, absolute bargain. Get on eBay if you need some odd tools. And so now I've got all these punches and drifts that you know you probably would pay a tenner for one of these. Well now I've got all these to use. Great stuff. Very happy with that. The next thing I need to do is put this drill press together, but I think I'll leave that to the next episode. But seriously, you guys supporting me is massively appreciated. So, and I know I say it a lot, but I don't think that can be stated enough. Anyway, enough of all that. In the next video, I'm going to be building this. How hard can it be?